first of all, I'd like to thank the International Committee for the invitation uh, to come here and give this paper today. I feel very honored to give this as we have so many experts in this area in the audience. Have the first slide, please. The, the presentation is going to be very much technology oriented, and I will be relating what we've been hearing thus far about arcing phenomena, about breakdown phenomena, to what sort of parameters are important in designing a vacuum switch here. I will also make reference to DC switches, and in both cases I will discuss the importance of the interaction of the arcing plasma with applied magnetic fields both along the axis of the arc and also transverse to the arc. The format of my presentation is first of all to describe a vacuum interruption, how is it constructed, how does it operate. Then discuss where are such vacuum interrupters applied. And here I'll be primarily talking AC and I will describe the ratings for a metal clad switch gear to give you a feel for the voltages and the currents involved in the development of such switch gear. I will then briefly talk about the basic properties of cathode spots and anode spots, such that we can then go through a half cycle of arcing and consider what physical phenomena occur during a half cycle of fault current arcing. Obviously, with interruption of current zero. Then I will make brief reference to uh, DC applications and the, the physics involved in two uh, particular areas. One, utilizing an axial magnetic field for a DC switch for the uh, tokamak machine, and also an application using the interaction of a vacuum arc with a transverse magnetic field, which has been used recently for metallic return transfer breaker on the Pacific intertie between Oregon and California. We have the next slide, please. This shows a schematic of a typical vacuum interrupter. We have two electrical contacts which are butting together in a high vacuum environment. When you separate these contacts during the, the passage of the AC current wave, you set up local hotspots on the electrodes and the arc, of course, burns in the metal plasma. You always get vapor moving away, or plasma, from the cathode regions. We will also be talking about the fact that at high current levels, we will also have significant evaporation from the anode regions. The vapor is continually uh, being evaporated from the electrodes is also continually condensing on both the electrodes and on the vapor condensation shield surrounding the electrodes. As you come down towards current zero, the number of cathode spots, the types of cathode spots that we've been discussing this morning, is continually decreasing. So the, the vapor production, the plasma production mechanism is decreasing. Condensation continues, of course, such that at current zero, you have a very rapid transition from a conductor to an insulator. The vapor condensation is included, the shield is included, to protect the insulating vacuum envelope from vapor deposition during the arcing half cycle. The high voltages are withstood by the, the vacuum condition and the ceramic envelope internally. Usually externally, you rely on the length of ceramic envelope exposed to the air to withstand the high voltage transits. You have a fixed electrode, you have a bellows electrode, and we'll be talking about the typical strokes involved in operation of such a switch. Can I have the next slide, please? The next slide is going to be a, the same diagram, but more realistic, showing a cutaway uh, vacuum interrupter. So this is the, the same diagram, the same orientation. The bellows is contained within this uh, bellows shield. Here are the electrodes, and the material of those electrodes is extremely important because it, it 
those electrodes have to satisfy very many conditions, such as passing the continuous current, uh, not welding. Obviously, when you have a fault, you must be able to separate those contacts and develop the arc. You must be able to control the high current arc. The arc must remain stable until current zero, and then have the rapid transition to an insulating medium. Here is the vapor condensation shield. Here is the uh, vacuum envelope. I'm showing here a ceramic envelope. Uh, various types of glass are also used for the vacuum envelope. Can we notice the next slide, please? I'm just showing here an alternative scheme for me to separate your electrodes where the, the vapor condensation shield is actually exposed uh, as part of the envelope and then the two ceramics would be end housings attached to the vapor condensation shield. Can the next slide, please? The, the range of present day applications, and here I'm talking the, the extensive use of vacuum interrupters for power applications. Certainly there are applications through 250 kilovolts for relatively low current uh, applications, but for power interruption, these are the primary uses of vacuum devices today. There are notable extensions towards 84 kV, but for extensive application, these are the ranges. In the USA, this, this range for distribution breakers can be closed. <coughs> for metal clad switch gear in range 5 through 15 kV. For tap changer applications, and also for contact applications, for motor start. In Japan, there is a similar range of application for metal enclosed switch gear, also extensive application in those voltage ranges for contactors and motor stoppers. And in Europe again, extensive application in distribution apparatus, in metal clad switch gear, and in contactors. And the typical continuous current ranges that we're talking about are of the order of 300 amperes to 3000 amperes. These, of course, is, this is the current that must pass through those electrode stems continually, although significantly higher currents are encountered when a fault comes along. Can have the next slide, please? To give you a feel for the, the current levels that a, a developer of vacuum interrupter uh, devices must be concerned with, certainly we must be concerned with current levels like 100 amperes, 50 amperes, what is happening just before current zero. But we're also concerned with high current arcing phenomena. I'm showing here for switch gear the MVA capability. 1000 MVA through 250 MVA. The voltage ranges typically used in the USA, here and here, for metal clad switch gear. And in particular, the current levels that are involved. And notice that when we're talking 48K RMS, you must also design your apparatus to control the asymmetric current, which is significantly higher, more like 100 kiloamperes. And to control those sort of faults, the typical interrupter envelope diameters are the order of 10 to 18 centimeters in diameter. Now the next slide, please. The attractive features of such devices are we have an enclosed arc, the, the hot plasma is, is not exposed to the surrounding environment. We have high reliability, we have long life, and we have short stroke and compact size. And both of these areas impact on the overall design of your compartments, of your overall metal clad switch gear. Short stroke means that the mechanism can be reduced in size, compact size has an effect on the overall enclosures. Have the next slide, please. I'm just giving here an example of, for a 500 MVA, this is the size that you would use for one pole of a, of a switch gear in vacuum. This is what is being replaced from a, an air breaker standpoint. That is the shoot of a, a comparable air breaker. Have the next slide, please. <laughs> In designing such a device, I will lose to the fact that you have to consider the continuous current. This affects the electro materials, the stem size, the interelectrode force in the closed position. 
you have to be concerned with the, the match to the actuating mechanism. What should the stroke be, the separation of the contact? What force is involved? How fast should you open those electrodes? You've got to design relative to the fault current. Again, this affects the electro materials, it affects the diameter of the electrodes, it affects the configuration, the shape of those electrodes. You must be concerned with the circuit installation. Again, this can be a parameter involving the electrode materials and the circuit voltage, again, determining the stroke and the electrode materials. If, for example, you have a high voltage circuit, the electrode materials should not be grossly distorted by the high current arc, or this you must control the high current arc. Next slide, please. I'll spend some time, since this is quite a busy slide, but I'm, the major parameters in vacuum switching devices I'm choosing to uh, discuss in terms of contactors or breakers, reclosers, and switchgear, two major categories. And in fact, the rest of my talk will focus primarily here. But contactors are low voltage devices primarily, and this means that the electrode stroke is only of the order of millimeters. We have relatively low interruption currents, and that means that this, that the control of the arc is not as important, disk electrodes can suffice. <coughs> However, you are applying these devices in low voltage circuits where the apparatus can have low uh, insulation levels, and therefore the material should be selected for high arc stability. Notice the fact that the current is relatively low, that the circuit voltage relatively low means that the, the stroke can be small. This has a major effect on the modes of the arc and the control that is necessary or that is different from the control necessary here. Here we're talking significantly higher voltages, which means a longer electrode stroke, higher interruption currents, and the combination of this current and the stroke means that we have anode involvement, we need to control the arc and we should shape the electrodes. We have a high circuit basic impulse level and this involves material to prevent gross melting relative to the voltage situation. Also, the stability criterion can be relaxed in this case because of the higher voltage uh, insulation level. So I will focus primarily on here, but before I go through an AC half cycle, I would like to uh, discuss some of the parameters of cathode spot phenomena, some of the important factors about anode spot phenomena, much of which you've already heard this morning, but in preparation for discussing an AC wave. For the next slide, please. In low current arcs, we have multiple cathode spots, which is an attractive feature for a vacuum interrupter because you get distributed erosion. Those spots are the source not only of electrons, but also of ions for the interelectrode plasma. The spots have a sub-microsecond lifetime. This was discussed uh, yesterday at great length, uh, Professor Messias. And the ion energies the energy of the ions moving away from these cathode spots is the order of 20 to 40 EV. The fact that you have these fundamentally unstable cathode spots and these high ion energies are both factors associated with a rapid dielectric recovery. This translates to an iron or gross plasma motion, if you like, of the order of 10 to 6 centimeters a second. The ion distribution is peaked perpendicular to the cathode plane, and the cathode spots in the presence of a transverse main field move in the retrograde motion. At high currents, you can have vastly different conditions. A single grossly evaporating uh, spot, you can have plasma jets, gross erosion, gross motion of the, uh, of the electrical material on the surface, and amperian motion of the single evaporating cathode spot. Next slide. At the anode, you can have a single, you can have a single grossly evaporating anode spot. Some of the recent uh, publications indicated that there may be several such spots 
but by no means the multiplicity observed of the cattle. The formation criteria are the probability of spot formation increases uh, with increasing electron spacing or with increasing current density, which means that you have small anode areas or if you go to high current. And I believe that many of these factors are associated with the flux of ions from the anode, sorry, from the cathode incident onto the anode. And under conditions when much of that flux is diverted away from the anode, such as large electron spacing where many of the ions move out of the intraelectrode gap or small anode area, that these factors promote anode spot formation. It is also found experimentally that this thermal characteristic related to the melting temperature and the thermal parameters of the anode is, is also a factor in anode spot formation. For a given uh, current level, if you reduce the uh, thermal characteristic of the material, then you will have anode spot formation for at lower current levels. You can postpone anode spot formation to higher currents by applying an accelerator field which has the effect of focusing the ions from the cathode region onto the anode surface. And an important factor, the heating effects associated with the anode spot can be reduced by amperian motion in a transverse magnetic field. Next slide, please. And this time, then, I would like to imagine that a fault has occurred and that this is the fault current wave, that we interrupt at current zero, and this is the recovery voltage wave. And go step by step, assuming that we've separated the contacts during the rise of that wave, Let's look at the factors involved with arc initiation, with the high current arc mode, with what happens in current zero, and then the types of phenomena involved, involved following current zero when the recovery voltage is applied across the separating contacts. Next slide, please. With respect to arc initiation, obviously it is first of all necessary to break the interelectrode well. Having done that, Electron separation is essentially at random during the current wave. But I'm, I'm just choosing to separate during the rise of the fault curve. You will form a molten metal bridge at the last point of contact, which will melt and will then explode. And it's from that molten metal bridge and the products from that molten metal bridge that the initial arc is burning. For currents less than about 7,000 amperes, from the last site of the melting metal bridge, you will get cathode spots migrating over the total cathode surface. If you separate a current much higher than 7,000 amperes, and remember that in a fault current operation you frequently will, because electron separation is essentially random, the arc can remain constricted for one to two milliseconds. And in fact, many modes can evolve of arcing from both of these conditions. These arc mode changes are associated with the increase in electrode separation and with arc current. And the principal modes I wish to talk about would be anode spots and also columnar arc discharge. Next slide, please. We've seen earlier today uh, photographs of individual cathode spots dotted about the cathode electrode. In practice, you can also have columnar arc discharge, which is a high metal, uh, high pressure of metal vapor, a plasma burning in that uh, metal vapor between the electrodes in a constricted form, and it's necessary to control that constricted form, such that as you approach current zero, you get back to the diffuse plasma, multiple cathode spot form of arc discharge. Next slide, please. So, we've gone from arc initiation I'd like to address then the high current arc mode, where if you have constricted arcs and significant ero erosion from the contacts with plasma jets, you can uh, have a tendency to destroy the electrodes, and of course electrode light is an important parameter, or those jets can contact the vapor condensation shield, and that is also um, not a thing to be encouraged. So you have to control this high current arc. Next slide, please. 
The, the methods of controlling the high current R are, first of all, to minimize the electrode stroke consistent with the particular interruption and voltage ratings. Don't pull the electrode more than you need. Increase the electrode area. Basically, the, the higher the current level of a particular interrupter, the, the bigger the diameter, because the contacts have been increased in the diameter. Use low vapor pressure electrode materials which are resistant to gross melting. And of course, those same electrode materials have got to be compatible with other requirements such as low weld strength, high conductivity, no residual thermionic emission at current zero. If you did have residual thermionic emission at current zero, you just continue to emit electrons, you would have immediate re-emission of the R discharge. And typical uh, interrupter materials used in practice would be copper chrome, copper bismuth. It is also necessary to shape the electrodes. And spiral electrodes are frequently used, contrate electrodes are frequently used. I'll explain what those are in a moment. And both of these electrode uh, types give a significant, well, they have a radio electric, sorry, radio magnetic field, which has a significant component transverse to the R discharge. And this drives the arc around the periphery of the electrode. An axial magnetic field can also give arc control. Although, if you separate at peak current, for example, you will still have a columnar arc discharge in the presence of an axial magnetic field. The next slide, please. What I mean by spiral arc or spiral electrode, the, this is the stem, the two stems of the electrode. This is the general shape of the uh, of the electrode surfaces, the general spiral contacts, and basically this is the arc. You will get a magnetic field which drives the arc around the periphery of the contact. Uh, and during the recess, if you wish, I have a, a short videotape here showing high current arcs being controlled in this fashion. Another type of, of uh, electrode is a contrate electrode where the, there are cuts in the side walls of the, the cup contact, which again has the effect of producing a magnetic field transverse to the arc discharge, which drives the arc around the periphery. This reduces the gross melting, this controls the high current arc. At this time, I would like to present a short movie demonstrating some of these arc control techniques. The first two sections of the movie will demonstrate the effectiveness of spiral electrodes in driving an arc around the periphery of the electrodes. Essentially, if the arms of the spiral point in the same direction, the current flowing in these arms creates a magnetic field with a component transverse to the high current arc. This magnetic field interacts with the arc current to cause rapid arc motion. By contrast, this third movie shows spiral electrodes with the arms pointing in the opposite direction. Here, there is no magnetic driving of the arc, and certain electrode regions become overheated. Vacuum interrupter electrodes would not be arranged in this manner. This fourth and final movie illustrates the effect of an axial magnetic field in promoting a diffuse arc following the initial bridge explosion and associated columnar arc. You will note the spread of multiple cathode spots over the lower cathode electrode. Next slide, please. I mentioned maximum field. This is a photograph of a, a high current 60,000 ampere arc subjected to such an maximum field. You see here the multiple cathode spots a diffuse into electroplasma and no anode activity. Next slide, please. Coming down then towards current zero must be concerned with arc, stability, and interruption. Next slide, please. 
We have, as we come towards trend zero, diffuse interelectron plasma and a declining number of cathode spots. And the, the two parameters which I wish to uh, discuss will be current chop phenomena and dielectric recovery. Current chop phenomena can occur when you're interrupting low currents rather than fault currents. And for contactors, uh, low chop materials are typically used uh, antimony within the molybdenum matrix, for example, the silver tungsten carbide is another uh, frequently used electro material. For breakers, which uh, the, the fault current levels are, are high, current chop is not the same phenomenon that you would have to consider relative to contactors. Typically, no additional surge protection is needed. In particular cases, there are methods of suppressing low voltages available. We have a rapid change from a good conductor to a good insulator at current zero. This is because we have a low plasma and vapor density at current zero. We have rapid condensation of the arc and products. And of course, for reignition, we need to reignite a cathode spot on the opposing electrode, the former anode. And I'll give you some feel for what I mean by rapid energy recovery in a moment. Go to the next slide, please. The important voltage phenomena we have to be concerned about arc reignition and restrikes. Arc reignition being during the rise of the voltage wave, a restrikes being some milliseconds after current zero, the basic impulse level, and also AC voltage withstand. Go to the next slide, please. And just giving you a feel of what those values are, this is the value of the transient recovery voltage for 15 kV switch gear. You must withstand 28 kV within 50 microseconds of current zero. The AC withstand is of this, this magnitude, and the basic impulse level, what value of voltage must that uh, short gap withstand is of the order of 100 kV for that particular application. And the next slide. I'd like to conclude by giving some, a brief overview about two DC applications, which of course is much less extensive than for AC. And one is, uh, relative to the only heating, heating interrupter, there is a necessity of interrupting 24 kA against 25 kV, and do that 10,000 times. In this case, an axiomagnetic field was applied uh, because in the condition of an axiomatic field, you will reduce the erosion and also promote a diffuse interelectrode plasma prior to a current counterpoise. In both these cases, you need to create a current zero. In this case, it is important to apply an axiomatic field because of the vastly different number of operations needed here than, say, for example, in a, a fault current interrupter. In the metallic return transfer breaker, it is necessary to interrupt this. 2.2 kiloamperes against a recovery voltage of 80 kilovolts. And there, arc instability was forced by applying a transverse magnetic field. So I will discuss very briefly each of those particular applications. The next slide, please. For the, the tokamak application, a very similar slide in a way, similar considerations apply to the AC case. You must initiate your arc, you have a high current arc mode, and then you counterpulse the arc to zero. You don't have this several millisecond period of the current descending to current zero to change from a high current mode <coughs> to a diffused plasma. And therefore, an actual field is applied to promote a diffuse arc plasma so you get a rapid recovery from the um, decaying arc gap. So you apply the actual field because of the peculiar condition of the counterpulse and also to prevent gross erosion during the 10,000 operations. And that aspect worked very well. Again, the recovery voltage of 25 kV, same polarity application. And the next slide, please. For the metallic return transfer breaker, here it was necessary to commutate current into a zinc oxide varistor and develop 80 kilovolts across this varistor to drive current from a ground return into a metallic return. The details of that are in a paper, but the way that it was done was to put a high voltage vacuum interrupter in series with a, a second interrupter to 
to which our and transverse field was rapidly applied. This changed the arc voltage from 20 volts to about 3,000 volts within a few microseconds, and in the presence of a parallel capacitor, caused the current to divert into the capacitor. Both of these gaps then recover, and you force the current to continue flowing into the capacitor, ultimately into the varistor. Next slide, please. Okay, a photograph of that device is shown here. This is the high voltage interrupter. This is the common mechanism. Here are a couple of magnetic field coils where you apply a transverse field to force our instability. The last slide, please. In summary, for vacuum switching devices, the, the type of device that much of the research that we've heard about during the last couple of days is applicable. Such devices are receiving extensive AC applications at 38 kilovolts and below. The design involves careful selection of electrical materials, electrical configurations, and assembly and processing techniques. You can have such switching devices serve in DC applications via the creation of a current zero. And the physics of the overall arcing and interruption phenomena are quite complex because they do involve an understanding of electrode processes, arc magnetic field interactions, dielectric recovery processes. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for a very fine paper, Clive. Uh, we have time for one question. Los Alamos National Lab. Uh, a comment and a question. First of all, on the DC operation, uh, might be important to point out that you do first have an inverse voltage. It's in the same direction as you do an AC case, and then it swings up the other polarity. And that, that may be of some importance for, for that operation. And uh, the question I have is on the act, use of axial fields uh, to uh, postpone the uh, initiation of anode spots. It uh, seems like up to now, I believe it's a uniform axial field that's been applied. Uh, has there been any work done in attempting to make that stronger at the anode end to sort of help focus the ion flux on the anode rather than, um, you know, put a stronger field coil on the, on the anode end instead of equal? Uh, are you talking DC application in particular or uh, in general? No, in general. I, I don't believe so. Uh, <coughs> obviously, in an AC wave, you never, you never know which is going to be That's down. correct. So it would probably be a case where you'd want to improve the performance for DC, as, as, since that's my role. Yeah, I, I don't think so. In fact, the, the way that the particular magnetic field was applied here was done by a, a two-turn coil in a series with the circuit current external to the uh, to the interrupter. But uh, I don't think that preferential shaping it hasn't been explored. I, I'm not sure when you're talking gaps for only maybe one centimeter that it would be uh, a viable thing to do. Thank you. 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 Th